alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala. So alhamdulillah um, we have discussed about certain aspects with regards to the authorships of Imam Nawawi namely we've mentioned that there are three notable works right so the first one is Arba'un al-Nawawiyah which is the Fatih hadith and then the second is Riyadh al-Salihin and then the third one is Al-Adkar right and so we've talked about Arba'un al-Nawawiyah the last session and for today we shall be going into the book of Riyadh al-Salihin and the scholar says that Riyadh al-Salihin is renowned for two main reasons one it is guidance for the soul and second due to the status of the author himself all right so the first aspects of it which is with regards to the guidance of the soul you will find that this contents provide guidance that can nurture and develop our soul right creating a great strength to adorn ourselves with worship which is the whole purpose on why we are being put on this earth right so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says wa ma khalaqtul jinna wal insa illa liya'budun verily i have not created mankind except to worship me in understanding the concept of worship it is not to be misunderstood and it is not to be limited to just rituals in a, in nature so if you're going to understand worship to be rituals so technically when we come to the mosque we pray we take wudu right we do zikir and that is our understanding of ibadah of worshiping god then it is not truly representative of what Allah wishes for it to entails when we said about the concept of worship it is more than that and that is why you will find al imam and there are many scholars who says when they talk about the concept of worship how do they define worship is munjami'un li kulli ma yuhibbu Allah wa yarda min qawlin wa fi'lin adhahira wal batina what does worship means it is a collective term right worship is a collective term used to denote anything that Allah loves and is pleased with ranging from expressions and actions inwardly and outwardly that is the concept of worship so worship could not be understood and should not be limited to just ritualistic in nature now this is extremely important i cannot stress on the, the importance of this because if we see the religion to be ritualistic in nature then we are not going to be fulfilling the rights of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in its full sense and we are not going to be fulfilling the rights of his creations in his full sense as well because why you're going to have shortage you're going to you have shortcomings if we think that it is sufficient that i pray subuh zuhur asar maghrib isha that's it i do not need to be dutiful to my parents i do not need to be you know if i meet my parents i just salam and then that's it i'm done i have done my part as a muslim right you might even think that seeking sustenance or to work is not obligatory upon us why because it is not worship and therefore in your working life you cheat people therefore in your working life you deal with interest usri right therefore in your working life you you do all kinds of things that is haram and then you go to the mosque and then you pray and you say alhamdulillah ustaz i am a good muslim why because you think that it is all limited to rituals in in nature and that is with regards to we pray and then that's it and for some we might think that it is about just fasting so you put a few things you put salat in it you put fasting in it you might even include hajj in it and those are part of worship no one's going to deny that 
but it is not limited to that. So, what is the definition of ibadah, worship? And this is something that we have to look into ourselves. We need to ask ourselves, do we understand what is the meaning of worship? Do we understand the meaning of ibadah? Because shaitan would put us in a bubble. Shaitan would want to make us think that we understand the meaning of ibadah. Do we understand the meaning of ibadah? Yes, Ustaz, I've been doing ibadah from a very young age. From small, my mother asked me to perform ibadah. And therefore, we think we understand the true meaning of ibadah. So, shaitan will put us in a bubble, thinking that we understand, but we do not. Because shaitan doesn't want us to explore what is the true meaning of ibadah. And when does this bubble break? This bubble bursts when we are six feet underground. When we die, and then we come to realization that, hey, I have not done the full extent of ibadah. I have misunderstood the concept of ibadah, to which I am being brought to life. I am being created for. I've, I've mentioned the ayat to you just now. وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ Verily, I have not created the jinn and mankind except to worship me. Now, what does worship mean? What does ibadah mean? So, as we go back to the istilah that I've mentioned just now, it is a collective term for everything that Allah loves and is pleased with. So, it is just not one. It's a collective term. Anything that Allah is pleased with is considered to be ibadah. Anything that Allah, that, that will attain Allah's pleasure is considered to be an ibadah. So when you do certain things, you do not need for Allah to say this is an ibadah. Or you do not need for the Prophet to say this is an ibadah. I give an example. Dua. In a hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Ad-dua huwa al-ibadah. In another narration, he says, Ad-dua huwa mukhul ibadah. So, Ad-dua is ibadah. Another narration states that Ad-dua is the mukhu, the brains or the contents of ibadah. Right? But the nature of it is, the Prophet says, Dua is an ibadah. So clear. That's, that's clear hadith. And therefore, we would acknowledge Dua is ibadah. And therefore, when we talk about salat, I'm going to wait, Ustaz. I'm going to see whether the Quran or Sunnah says that salat is ibadah. I don't want to wait for fasting is ibadah. Iktikaf is ibadah. Nikah is ibadah. I'm going to wait for all those verses that shows that. No, that's not the way. That is not the way on how we understand what is ibadah. Anything that Allah is pleased with, anything that attains Allah's pleasure, is considered to be ibadah. So whenever Allah says, Inna Allah yuhibbul mutawakkilin, verily Allah loves those who are reliant upon Him, it's considered to be ibadah. Inna Allah yuhibbul mutatahirin, Allah loves those who purify themselves. So purification is considered to be an ibadah. So when you purify yourself, there's different types of purifications. There's physical purifications and there's ritual purifications. When you purify yourself physically, you get rid of all the najis that you have. Right? The physical najasa, the physical najis, you get rid of it, you are considered to be purifying yourself. And it's an ibadah. When you Talk about the ritual purification that is free from the hadad, the major hadad and the minor hadad. This is considered to be ritual impurity. So impurity can be divided into two main categories. The first category is physical impurity. So what is physical impurity? Right, so you have the najis uh, you know, the, the, the major hadith, the, the, the minor, minor najis, major najis, the minor najis, and the intermediate najis. Right? So we talk about the concept of the saliva of the dog. This is a major najis. 
major impurity. Alright? So how do you get rid of it? Get rid of the essence. Pour seven, uh, seven times of water over it. The first or any one of it with soil. So that is considered to be the major physical impurity. Minor sorry, uh, minor physical impurity would be the urine of a baby boy not reaching the age of two years old and only consume milk. So what do you do? Get rid of it. Get rid of the essence. Sprinkle water over it and then wipe. You're done. You're clear. The third is the intermediate physical impurity. And the, the, the intermediate physical impurity is all the impurities that doesn't fall under the category of the major and minor physical impurity. Right? But it will nullify your solat if you, if you have it. So you need to get rid yourself from, from that from that state. So that is physical impurity. What about ritual impurity? Ritual impurity is two. The major ritual impurity, right, which you can only get rid of when you take the obligatory bath, the ritual bath. Right? So things that, that makes you to be in this state will be when you consume it with your wife. Right? When you have wet dreams. Right? So this would put you in a major ritual impurity. And to get rid of it, what must you do? You must take a ritual bath. Right? So that is known as mandi hadath basa, or, the, or the, the bath of the, of the major ritual. And you get rid of yourself. And then you have the minor ritual impurity. What is the minor ritual impurity? Any state when you're not in the state of butu. Right? So when Allah says, In Allah Yuhibbul Mutatahirin, Allah loves those who purify themselves. There's different types of purifications. And any types of purifications by itself, by its nature, is considered to be a form of ibadah. So you do not need to go in search. I need to find a verse of the Quran or the hadith of the Prophet that says wudu is ibadah. Uh, the, the cleansing of najis is ibadah. And every other thing is ibadah. You do not need to go to that extent. Anything that Allah says, Allah is pleased with, and Allah is, 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 uh, Allah's pleasure is with it, is considered to be a form of ibadah. From expressions. So what are the kind of expressions that will receive Allah's pleasure? Dhikr. Subhanallah, 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 Alhamdulillah, 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 Alhamdulillah. So those are the forms of zikr that's considered to be pleasure, to attain the pleasures of Allah. But likewise, when you give and advice to your brothers. That is also a form of ibadah. So, you notice just now, I was having difficult technical difficulties. Some of our brothers help us. Right? Those brothers, when they give this advice, that is also considered to be part of ibadah. So, we have to shift that mindset. Oh, ibadah or dhikr. Is only subhanallah, alhamdulillah, Allah akbar. When I speak nicely to my brother, that's not an ibadah. It is, actually. You smiling to your brother is an ibadah. Instead of meeting to your brother, huh? what? Huh? What do you want? That's not an ibadah. When you meet to your brother, you might not even know the language. We might speak different language. You do not know what you're talking about. But then you say, assalamu alaikum. No, you, you, you're smiling. That's sufficient for now. That is a form of ibadah. Alright? And insha'Allah, I'm not completed with the concept of ibadah, right? With, with certain constraint. Uh, we shall uh, proceed uh, on this topic next week, insha'Allah. With that, I will say this, and 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 I will say إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر وبالله التوفيق والهداية وبالرضا والعناية وبسلامة والعافية السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته